Interviews are scary. Recording a YouTube or TikTok video is scary. I was scared of interviews. The formal settings and trying to be somebody or not are scary. But let's flip the script for a second. Let's pretend you're the interviewer. You've just gone through a hundred other interviews that day and you're just desperate to find somebody who matches the job role, somebody that you like. It's like as a kid, you think you're scared of spiders. Until you become an adult, except for some people, and realise that the spiders are more scared than you. That interviewer doesn't have anything against you. He just wants to find somebody and be like, this is the perfect candidate for the role. Interviews aren't there to find out who's the best at coding or who's the best at networking, who's the most professional candidate in their field. It's about building a genuine connection with that person they're interviewing. If they're a nice, likeable person that they can get along with. To do that, all you have to do is just be yourself. Now, when I do an interview, I usually know that I've passed it because I know I, I can just be myself and a lot of people can't be themselves. Once I understood that interviewers have that mindset and they're just like anybody else, interviews became so easy. I would come into the interview, greet them like my mate. Hey, how's it going? Obviously not too informal. Yo, Wagwan, where's the job? I came to them. Hey, how are you doing? Shared some common interests, got through the interview, usually received a job offer afterwards always receive the job offer afterwards. Here's how you can prepare for all your interviews in just 10 minutes. Just be yourself. I like to make people laugh and I would usually try and make the interviewer laugh. The interviewer will just remember me and usually gives me the job because I've made them laugh and they have a bias thinking, I like this candidate. I want to see him in the workplace in the future. As somebody who's a big fan of chess, I even started talking about chess to the interviewers. Did you see the recent World Chess Championship? And surprisingly, nobody had. And after a while, I realised there's no point talking about chess because things just become awkward. But if you can share a common interest like football, the recent Euros, the World Cup, people will instantly make a connection with you. Once you can treat an interviewer like a friend, the next set of tips becomes so much easier. The first set of tips is how you present yourself. And this is broken down into three categories. Eye contact, speaking clearly and body language. Answer the question. I go on to long tangents, but as long, as long as the tangent is relevant to the question you're answering, just make sure you're answering the question. Try your best to speak slowly, which I know is easier said than done because you're probably nervous and speaking as quick as possible because you're scared of what the interview might think of you. But you have to speak clearly and slowly for the interviewer to easily understand what you're saying and show that you're a good communicator because you probably put in your CV, excellent communicator. Avoid slumping in your chair. You do not want to be in your interview, but... My name's uh, Sturdy Forts and uh, I've been studying computer science for uh, three years and you're not even making eye contact. I really want to work at this company because uh, I think the pay is good. Like, do you just get fired? Like, they'll stop the interview then. And the last thing about presentation is try and make the background as clear as possible. You don't want any distractions. You don't want to have a white hoodie hanging in the back of your stuff written on a whiteboard, perfumes. The interview can see everything about your room. You just want to have a nice, clear background, which doesn't show off anything that might give the interviewer a bad impression of you. No distractions, no messy bedroom, nothing that the interviewer might use to take their attention away from you. A lot of recruiters come across people Googling answers in their interview. Don't Google answers during your interview. I've done this before and I've got away with it because I'm the GOAT, but you probably won't get away with it. When ChatGPT first came out, I used ChatGPT to answer the questions for a pre-recorded interview where the questions come out beforehand without any human watching you. And when it's time to answer, you're just looking straight at the camera. For virtual interviews where you're one-on-one -on -one with a person, a lot harder. And in in-person interviews, if you manage to use ChatGPT or Google on an in-person interview, Fair enough, I'll employ you. In fact, let me work for you. Dress as if you're going to come into an in-person interview for an online, virtual or pre-recorded interview. Nice shirt, no hoodies, no jackets, no logos. Simple shirt, you can't go wrong. There's no need to do anything above and beyond. Now, past presentation, you want to stand out and the best way you can do this is by using personal experiences. This means every time you answer a question, relate it back to something that you've done in your life, whether that be school projects, extracurricular activities, work experience, internship stuff, but don't just say generic answers which anybody can give. Share your personal experiences with every single response. If the question is, what are your strengths? You're not gonna go good at communicating and stop communicating. Instead of just saying Python, you say, well, I was a data engineer for HSBC for three years. And in that time, I've completed over 70 projects and received best employee of the month. If they ask for a time, you overcame a terrible challenge. You don't just go, getting here was difficult today, there was a lot of traffic. 
you say, well, I was working as part of a team one time and this happened, but I resolved it this way. And here's what I learned afterwards. Something called the star method. If you can learn the star method, you can answer any interview question. And the second way you stand out, which is so important, is to ask questions at the end. Every interview at the end of the interview will ask, do you have any questions for me? This is your chance to show that you know what you're talking about. You, you're familiar with what's going on. You ask questions that only somebody that is familiar with the industry would know. What do I wear to work? What projects are the team currently working on? Not just, nah, n nothing. I mean, I don't know what to ask because I've never really had an internship before. You need to act like you're experienced before you're experienced. Ask questions like, what will be expected of me? Is there anything that I can do before joining? What are my team's current skill sets? If you know what you're doing and you know what you're talking about, the interview will be like, oh, this guy clearly, you know, he's asking the right questions. He knows what to expect. And that applies for anything in life. If you look like you have experience about something, people will want to work with you more than the person that's completely clueless new to the job. For the next section, I'm going to talk about tips for preparation. Of course, you need to prepare. It's not a case of weeks and months of preparing. It gets easier over time. And that's something called practice. Two ways you can prepare. Number one is just make sure there's post-it notes around your laptop, a laptop to your left, which has ChatGPT answers ready to respond to the questions. So worst case scenario, you do get stuck. You can just do one of the, the good old, oh, my strengths are um, team building. And even if you do forget a question, or if even if you can't answer a question, do you mind if I have a little bit of time to answer that question? Because people appreciate and respect honesty, and it's gonna do a lot better than just going, oh, I don't know. Um, what are my strengths and the second bit of preparation that you have to do be up to date with relevant news that the company's recently gone through this is the reason i secured my current placement is because i knew what has happened recently and i mentioned this in my interview and the, the interview started nodding his head like this he knows what the company's currently going through he's done above and beyond research he isn't just chat gpt 10 facts about the company but he's been staying up to date and is clearly passionate about the company. Rather than ChatGPT, you can use something like Bing AI or Copilot, which you can use to get real world information about company news, which you can present in an interview. You clearly know what you're talking about. If you've written down and follow everything that I've said today, you will pass any interview and feel confident about it before you've even gone into the interview. And once you've got that superpower, you get any single job because the interview is basically the final stage for most people. Thank you guys for watching the video.